Hi there, my front-end friends. I'm really excited to share with you that I've started a second channel, and it's for my new podcast, General Musings. I started the podcast a few months ago, actually, taking the introductions to my weekly Sunday newsletter and making them into podcast form because I realized that not everyone wants another email in their inbox, and I felt like the format of them would fit really well in audio form. While it's lived in podcast land only up until now, I've had enough people asking me to also bring it here to YouTube. And by doing so, it also makes it available as a podcast on YouTube Music, which is just a nice little bonus there. Now, unlike the content here on my main channel, the content on the podcast is not tutorials, and actually it's often not even directly related to CSS, which is definitely a little bit of a departure for me if you're used to just consuming my content here. And that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't bring the podcast to this channel and instead did it as a second channel, just because I felt like there was enough of a separation between the types of content. Because instead of doing tutorial type stuff, I talk about whatever's front of mind, hence the name General Musings. And it's just whatever was front of mind for me in any given week. So for some examples, I have an episode where I talk about how I use Notion to help me stay on task and stay organized. There's also another one where I talk about a trick I use to stay focused when I'm working from home. Though, of course, sometimes they do fall into the CSS realm, just because front of mind for me often is something at least somewhat CSS related. So, you know, one episode I talk about, it's just called the CSS mindset, and I talk about why CSS is different from other languages. I have another one where I talk about intrinsic layouts and intrinsic web design. And so they're always at least tangentially related to development in some way, or things that I feel like my audience would benefit from in one way or another, sometimes very tightly related to CSS and sometimes much more general. Now, when I started the podcast, it was really just a big experiment for me. I wasn't even sure if people would be interested in having a podcast and listening to me talk about stuff. But so far, the results have been a resounding yes. People have been really enjoying it, so I'm planning to keep doing it, hence why I'm also bringing it over here to YouTube. And if you go and look at the back catalog of them, you'll notice that the early episodes were only about three, four minutes long. And since then, they've actually expanded up into the like 10 to 15 minute range instead. And one of the reasons for that is I originally was only doing the very introduction part of my newsletter where I'd talk about random stuff, like I was saying. Whereas now I also include the rest of the content from my newsletter as well, where I talk a little bit about what I've been up to in the given week, as well as another part where I talk about other awesome stuff from around the web, where I talk about other sites and resources that I've come across, and where I share other awesome stuff that other content creators are creating as well. And speaking of the back catalog, if you're the type of person who likes to listen through the back catalog of a podcast to not have missed any episodes, if you do go through those earlier ones, you'll notice that not only are they shorter, but there's two other really big differences as well. The first one being that the first six episodes don't actually have any video because I wasn't originally planning to bring it to YouTube in this format, but the newer episodes, just like this, it's me talking to the camera, just like we see here. The other difference though, which is probably a much bigger one, is in the very early episodes, I was actually using an AI text-to-voice tool called Eleven Labs to read the script for me. Because as I said, when I started the podcast, it really was an experiment. And my idea was I would have my newsletter written, I could copy that, paste it into Eleven Labs and generate the content for me. Because after playing around with it for a little while, I was really impressed with the results. And I thought maybe that could be good enough. And the results of it actually were kind of mind blowing. Here's an example of an introduction to one of the episodes. This is an experimental podcast where I'm using Eleven Labs AI voice cloning to turn the general musings of my weekly newsletter into podcast form. Uh, if you're listening to this, I'm going to assume you know who I am, but just in case you don't, my name is Kevin and I like to help people fall in love with CSS. So it's pretty good, right? And by being able to use that, my idea was I can just copy and paste that into 11 labs, download the file, like I was saying, uh, and then it was a very low effort endeavor, no editing would be required and I could just get episodes up nice and easily. But after a few episodes of playing around with it, I realized it was taking me longer than I was hoping it would. And it wasn't saving me as much time uh, just because when I'd have to upload, there's a few settings within 11 labs with so some levers you can pull to sort of play around with stuff. And I'd always end up having to do that. And then I'd have to make a few changes to the script as well, just to try and improve how it was reading certain things. And then I'd also end up regenerating it a few times until I'd get a result that I really liked. The last thing I wanted to do was actually have to like generate multiple takes and then edit them together. So I wasn't about to start doing that. And 
I was reaching the point where I'm like, you know what? It's easy enough for me to just read my newsletter to the camera like I'm doing right now. And the editing for these is very simple. So it wasn't really going to be more work and definitely comes across as a little bit more authentic, especially because while Eleven Labs, honestly, mind-blowingly impressive and kind of scary, but also every now and then it would just fall a little flat with its delivery. So here's an example of, of that. And of course, until next week, don't forget to make your corner of the internet a little bit more awesome. Awesome. So yeah, the podcast has definitely evolved a little bit, though I think it's starting to reach its final form in one way or another at this point, although I'm sure it's going to continue to evolve at least a little bit as I refine sort of my approach to how I'm delivering everything and organizing uh, the content from it just to make it work as well as possible in audio form. But the main thing is, it is a weekly podcast. Most episodes will probably be in the 10 to 15 minute range, and it will be out every Sunday as an alternative to my weekly email newsletter. If you are interested in it, as you might have guessed, the link to the second channel is right below this video in the description. So you can go and check it out. And if you listen to an episode or two and you enjoy it, please do consider subscribing to it as well. Or if you'd rather, I've put links to Apple Podcasts and Spotify down below, as well as the RSS feed. So you can manually add it to your podcatcher that way as well. So yeah, exciting times for me. Second channel, more more stuff to manage. But yeah, for me, it's something that I've always enjoyed. My newsletter is one of my highlights of my week every time I'm working on that. And so doing it in more formats so it can reach more people is, I think, a fun thing to do. And if email isn't for you, definitely at least give one episode a lesson, even if it's one of the AI ones, just out of curiosity, just to see if it's the type of thing that you might enjoy. And once you've listened to an episode or two, once you're all done with that, you've subscribed to it in your podcatcher and, and all those good things. Don't forget, of course, to continue making your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.